Welcome to another episode of Bringing Down the Grindhouse, a podcast where we discuss horror in media. And tonight, the elderly, sexual impotency, and porn. We're going to explore all of these as we dive into the new film, X. I'm Mitch. I'm Murr. No, I'm John. <laughs> Good to lean in. I didn't realize my mic is so far from me. <laughs> X, X just came out like, three weeks ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's new-ish. Yeah. Uh, movies have been on a weird scheduling because they like will leave them in theater for a week and then the next week they're on like streaming services. Or they're already like one day only now. Yeah, which I do not like it all. Yeah, they re- only released. Oh God, what was it? Um. There was a movie not so long ago. They only had it in theaters for like a day. They did this with uh, Titani. They only yeah. released it for like three days. And then that was it. So it's been kind of rough ever since the post-pandemic kind of feel for it. Right. But X is pretty cool. I enjoyed the movie. Uh, I was surprised. I had like almost no expectations going into it. But I was like, yeah, this is probably going to be pretty enjoyable. And they actually did a lot of things different. Mm-hmm. than what you would have expected from kind of your sexploitation type film. Yeah. As far as exploitations and sexploitation films go, I thought this was going to be cookie cutter, run of the mill, right. uh, hit the beats, get out of the movie theater. Yeah. But it kind of takes you for a little bit of a ride, which is Don't get nice. me wrong. There is nudity there is. and sex in this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as well it, as gro- <laughs> pretty it, bad violence. It, it's a mesh of two movies that I really like. Boogie Nights, which we talked about. <laughs> And Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty Damn. good. Yeah, that's a pretty good combo. <laughs> yeah, and and it, and, went, and they and they think they they pair really well for this one too. It did really it's well. not often that we get um, a movie that depicts uh, porn stars. Like, yeah, like as the main characters. Yeah, that's true. They put a lot of emphasis on knowing who they were. Also, Kid Cudi's in this. Yeah, as the main black uh, actor in this. A black porn star, which is even funnier because it's this like the seventies. Yeah, he's a fro and big mustache. Yeah, so he's got like the whole outfit, and this is like you know kind of the era of like well, we're gonna start making some big budget. He's also a Vietnam vet too. He's a Vietnam yeah. vet, <laughs> badass. Yeah, he said he what he had gone like several times. Two two yeah. campaigns. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. This fucking got this, some historical context. This movie's cool. It is set in nineteen seventy two, right. but it was released this year in twenty twenty two. Uh, I'm going to go over some production notes real quick. Uh, so the, yeah, my notes. It's set in what year? 1972. Uh, okay. So that makes sense. So I was like, this has to oh, be sorry. connected. 79. 79. So this is, this is after a few years earlier. So, um, one of the main things that happened in like a historical context was the movie Deep Throat came oh. out in 1972, which was the first like mainstream media porn film. That featured the, the actual performance of Deep Throat on film. Oh, and shit. the reason why it was important is because it went into mainstream media and people lost their minds over it. They thought it was like the best thing. It was <laughs> super popular. So popular that they had to put in rules and change the like the NPR rating that they have for films. And this was one of the first to get that X rating awesome. because they were like, whoa, we can't just put like straight up porn in that. And then that's why I got kicked to do other movies that were like not in the mainstream media good, being released. Good old theaters. American prudishness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right. Exactly right. <laughs> they talk about it in the movie too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this movie's... This uh, is also the golden age of porn, by the way, if you don't know. 1970s, shit. golden T- age of porn. S- same time period as uh, Boogie Nights? Yeah. <laughs> yep, exactly the same. Yes. Uh, so this is like the... Um, well, X is the reference to that X rating from the MPAA. So that's like the whole like gimmick of the the film. Yes, that the, they're basically in this time area. Uh, it was directed and written and produced by T- Ty West. Yeah, who has done a couple of other things. Um, they they did um a certain horror film. I'm trying to remember. Uh, it has a specific name. It's like soup. Uh, they did the Innkeepers, and the House of the Devil. The uh, House of the Devil is a good. They film. They also directed VHS. Yes. So they, they've been around for a minute doing a lot of films. Uh, they, have, they also got distribution by A24, which is really cool. It's kind of weird to think that this is an A24 film, but it is. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I mean when, I, when I saw the, the first surprised. opening for it. I mean, I mean, well, eight, eight, like, like we've been saying before, we've covered a lot of A24 movies. They've been 
so whoever's running a AT4 right now, they're doing like exactly what they need to do for distribution because they've they've been getting stuff that is exactly the same vibe all able to like they've been distributing to a specific audience and those people are blowing them up like yeah. they've become one of those distributors where they're like hey do you want to distribute my shit and now they can be more selective about what goes in and out you film nerds really like a24 yeah. movies yep i'm one of those yeah nerds <laughs> that likes a24 movies i want to get into the uh cast real yeah quick. go for it uh, to round off our main character, we have Mia Goth, who also played in the remake of Suspiria. As Sarah. Yes. Uh, she's also Shia LaBeouf's spouse. We have Jenna Ortega as Lorraine. She is the church mouse character. She's very petite and very, uh, you know. Reserved. Reserved. <laughs> she is the quote unquote virgin in this movie. She's been in something else, hasn't she? She looks so familiar. I think she was in, wasn't she the girl from. Um, the fucking Five Nights at Freddy movie we talked about, isn't that the same girl? Um, you're talking about the uh, uh, Willy's Wonderland. Yeah, or it could be somebody who just looks like her. Oh, you know, <laughs> you know who she was in? Uh, she was in um, Scream. Oh shit, that's the, right. The remake of Scream. She was also in the Studio Six 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 with the the people who uh, Foo Fighters, their horror movie. Yeah, that they made. I thought she looked familiar. She's done a lot of other work. She also played a minor character. Oh in fuck! She was in you. That's yeah. I recognize her from you, that's which we was. also need to talk about. But uh, okay, that's why I recognized yeah. her face. I was like, she looks super familiar. Uh, rounding off our cast here, because a very small cast. Yeah. Of characters. We have Brittany Snow. She plays Bobby Lynn, the blonde. Love her. Who loves to get fucked. She's so <laughs> funny. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> she's so funny. She's like your like the woman who's been a stripper probably for a long time and like got into being in porn and just random stuff. But like her character legitimately likes the job that she does. Oh, yeah. She's, and is she's not ashamed it about it at all. Kid Cuddy as Jackson, nice. which is pretty nice. I Who even plays real guitar. In the movie, which he knows how to play that song. Yeah, I'm playing landslide. I right? wanted, I wanted. <laughs> we were making jokes because like he has a, this beef right now with Kanye, oh, and we were just like, God. we were like, yeah, fuck the white bitch. Don't think about Kanye. Don't think about Kanye. <laughs> 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 uh, and then there's Martin Henderson as Wayne, the uh, not the director and the producer of all these films, as well as their manager. Yeah. Well, he's more like. He's more like the producer because he does get the film kid to help him. Yeah, but he has the ideas and the, he's yeah. also the script writer. That's true. He did write the script. Yeah. And then we have Owen Campbell as RJ. The What a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about this and dude at some point. Steven Ur as Howard. Uh, you want to who plays the old lady? Who? Mia Goth. Oh, okay. So we're we gotta talk about this because they definitely make an allusion to her being older several times and younger. They even have the same makeup on at some oh, yeah. point. So yeah. So okay, I'm glad that's a thing because I didn't even look up who was playing who. So right. I was like, this looks like her and just old people makeup. There were several scenes where I'm like, dude, that looks just like her. Like when they're like talking to each other in the hallway of the house, I'm like, dude, she looks just like an older version yeah. of her. It's like kind of creepy. Um. I'm glad that this movie go like they spend a little bit of time with the characters so that you know what's their vibe. Like, what are they trying to get out of this experience? So the the producer or the writer of the script, this is just like a small town dude who's like, I need to make some more cash and has turned to like directing porn <laughs> to try to get some money. But he's convinced that it's going to be popular because of. This is like the time when you should be making porn films. Right. So it's like he knows that one of these can hit and he could probably make some money off of it. They also um, stem from the fact that like the two virgin characters, they die first. Yeah. So this is, this turns on its head the idea that if you have sex that you're going to die right. in the film. Granted, a lot of people die in the film. Yeah. But this does also have a final girl. It does. It does. <laughs> but it does. That's the thing. It, it, we were talking about how it's like, you know, it has the tropes, but yeah. it also likes to turn it on its head. Well, the final girl is not a virgin. It's yeah. the important bit that's, here. Yeah. And so that's what changes. And then they have a lot of uh, like B and C stories throughout the whole thing. So like from the get go, 
the main character, I forget her name, the one that Mia Goth plays, Maxine. Maxine, yeah. Which is funny because her name is Maxine Minx. But <laughs> anyway, she like she obviously wants to not do porn anymore. She wants to be a star. She wants to be famous, like a movie star, which is her thing. But she's also like doing blow. Yeah. Like throughout the film. So it's like she's she's that a uh, really specific stereotype of like someone just trying to make it. And this might be like one of the paths she takes. Yeah, she even her manager Wayne is like keep it down you know try to try to chill out he he's in a relationship with her right yeah they're go, they're a uh, future spouse is what he said the okay future spouse that's right they're like he i guess they're fiance future fiance is oh he is. doesn't even he hasn't even proposed at that yeah. point that's yeah. so hilarious. sometimes <laughs> jesus um your uh what's her name Brittany snow who plays bobby lynn the, yeah. the older uh blonde Who's like your sort of experienced workhorse? <laughs> like, <laughs> see, I love the conversation she has with Kid Cudi's character, which she's like, "Oh, you thought that was real?" And like, they have a whole conversation <laughs> about faked orgasms from women. I was like, "This is so funny." She's like that kind of girl, like, "Oh, it's okay, baby. You know, I got you. Like, I know you know how this is. How it is. That's how it's and always they're been." In a, they're like in a relationship too, so I think one. So, I, do we need to tell? more about the production before we go into it because it really isn't that much i will say one more note of production yeah uh so this movie was shot back to back with the prequel oh so there's There's something already so uh mia goth is gonna play pearl as a younger version of her interesting and it's set to be released this year oh that's probably why they did that then so that they would like they would look alike yeah and so directly after finishing x they asked mia goth do you want to shoot the prequel? We'll start right now. Dang. Okay. Yeah. That's dead. And her old person makeup and stuff. The, from what I can tell, this movie did pretty well. Yeah. People actually liked it. I think it's because it had enough of what they were expecting, which was the violence, some nudity, but then it also had some new vibes where they Ooh. talk about stuff. I also have to bring up that um, this is this falls into the category of Psycho Biddy, which is a very <laughs> yeah. niche exploitation film also coined unofficially as hag exploitation films basically basically if your movie stars an old woman going through like distress and is a, ki- a killer i have hiccups god damn it <laughs> uh it falls in under this line we have talked about another hag exploitation movie before but we didn't know it was under this genre last night in soho yep yeah which is uh a really interesting uh, yeah like it's a niche genre there's probably been a bunch of films in well, the genre for b-movies it's because people will usually avoid anything that includes sex and old people and or old mm. people and violence <laughs> there were some parts in this movie where i was like this is like really wholesome like there's some wholesome moments between the wife and the the old man and then like at some point i was like wait this is actually really disgusting because <laughs> they're like really <laughs> fucking old oh my god um this is also an a24 film and released at South by Southwest in, on March 13th, 2022. And it made $13 million in the box office. However, we don't have a budget. Um, I'm assuming if it got premiered at South by Southwest, then the budget was somewhere around a million, maybe even less. Ooh. Because most festivals have a limit of like what's like the upper limit of, of being able to submit, which we've talked about before. It's also shot in New Zealand. However, it says that they're in an uh, area of Texas. Yeah, so I don't know why they did that when they could have probably just went to Texas and shot something. (laughs) But, you know, fucking people do this all the time. It is definitely an homage to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Fuck. (laughs) I almost forgot one more thing. Yeah. Uh, The score is done by Tyler Bates, who does all the Marvel movies. Yeah, which is kind of wild. (laughs) uh, As well as, like, some other tracks, but it's also done with Chelsea Wolfe, too. Chelsea Wolfe is dope. Chelsea Wolfe is fucking dope. She even does the cover of uh, Wee Wee Marie. She sings it. (laughs) So like she does like sweet. she does like like doom metal shit right? It's like it's like doom metal. It's like ambient. There's yeah. like shoegaze. It's like heavy. A little, little bit of folk music. <laughs> a little bit of folk music. Chelsea Wolf is great. Yeah. So that that's fucking dope. Black they got metal her to do in, it. here and there. You know. Loved it. I mean, you could hear it like as you're going through it. You're like, this is a dope soundtrack. Yeah. I was I was like, why are they doing this? Discord I want. I, this is another one of those movies I want the vinyl for. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's so much to talk about this movie. There is a good amount of stuff. I think what I want to start with first is how um, they're representing the sex workers in the film. So people who are strippers, porn stars, um, like anybody there 
does not have a negative view on it. The 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 art director or what's his name the the filmmaker quote unquote RJ he secretly has his his reservations about it that you don't find out until later. Which I think he might be a hack. He's a fucking hack. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about that conversation he has because they get there, they get to the place, they start their porno movie, and they're like, "Yeah, this is the vibe." But the girl who shows up there, who's his assistant and his girlfriend, and is and the uh, the sound. Operator. Yeah, she's like the boom mic operator, so yeah. she's very close to what's happening. So she's getting the uh, the action in her ears, basically, and she's vibing. She's like, "I dig this. Like, this is. I didn't think I would like this." And they all sit around after they made their porn video. They had a very positive conversation about this. They, they for they, the seventies. They first talk about what it is to have their relationship and to also have sex work a part of their lives. So, like, what does it mean to be in a relationship with somebody who has sex with other people? And right. as far as the guys are concerned except for the film director, they're cool with it. They're like, it's business. Yeah, as long as the camera's rolling. Yeah, but so that already is kind of iffy, but like, that's a thing. But then the guy's girlfriend, the film director, is like, I want to do a scene. And we're like, so anybody who's watching is like, yes, <laughs> this is what I oh, wanted out of this go. film. Let's go. You, like, <laughs> you see the terror on his face. Like, oh. This is such a great moment because I knew that they were heading down this path because she's showing interest in what they're doing. And so she has her mini story of like, oh, she wants to have her sexual expression. Which she also probably would have been the final girl had she not had sex. But the other girl had sex and still survived. But the thing is, as the, as like the trope. The oh, so she is the trope while the other girl is not. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It flips on its head. Also, they also foreshadow everyone's death in this movie. They do. Yeah. Um, so like when the blonde girl's leaving the strip club. There's a giant mural of a gator pulling down some <laughs> panties on a on a stripper. Oh, um, poor girl. Yeah, she gets fucking Wayne just demolished. Describes how he wants people's eyes to pop out of their heads and literally gets his eyes popped out of his head. Just just fucking pitchfork to his face. And then Kid Cudi talking about how he's had too many farmers point guns in his face in Vietnam. Yep, and he got shot by a farmer with the twelve gauge. Oof. Damn. Yeah. I, wow. <laughs> I was really hoping Good that Kid Cudi would be the one to be eaten by an alligator. I was like, Kid Cudi get eaten by an alligator. Kid Cudi get eaten by an alligator. Let's go. A specific one. <laughs> right, um, they, they totally play with it like that too. Yeah. Definitely. He's like, search around the water. I was like, there's gators in there. There's fucking, and then no, it's just the old man with a shotgun. Yeah. Um. So, so the girl is like, I want to be in a scene. And he, and the boyfriend is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, hold on. We're not doing this. He's like, nah, nah, I don't want to be a cuck. It, essentially he's like kind of that's the vibe he's getting but then the the producer is like come on dude like why are you being such a pussy about it like it's just like on camera it's so funny because this older dude is talking to a younger guy who's probably supposed to have a more like modern take on it right. and is telling him that he's like why are you acting like this why are you being a bitch and so they actually have a conversation that happens a lot around porn around mm. sex work which is how do people feel about their partners being part of this like say the modern example now is how do people feel about their partners having only fans yeah which isn't even having sex with other people that's just like putting that's pictures just, of yourself yeah just being naked just being naked on camera for we, you know i mean i remember when we talked to chris about this right and we had him on for the interview we talked about um, asked him if he thinks that um relationships like without someone also in the industry if they work out and he said no yeah he said it's tough because yeah. you're having this disconnect yeah. Uh, with so many different people and then by the time they come to spend time with their partner they might be just worn out from whatever job they're doing and they probably are not interested very much in having yeah. sex with them anymore. i mean it was also that but then there's also if the other partner isn't even involved in that industry yeah. at all then they are don't understand fully different they don't set have, of morals yeah. i would guess I, yeah. I could hear a definite argument like oh, okay i'm going to work oh time for you to fuck other women see ya <laughs> yeah so <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so that you might end up having sort of the negative aspect i think what was refreshing for the film was that there was no negative responses besides that one dude and he's kind of brushed aside. Like, they're kind of like, stop. <laughs> I love the fact he's like, you know, maybe she gets famous. She brings you along. I was like, yeah. Loved it. Loved yeah, that. There you go. There you go. Even, See, that's the optimistic yeah. attitude right there. I loved mm -hmm. also the moment where he walks out of the room after they filmed their scene. He was like, that was amazing. He's like, feel how hard I am. And he puts his hand on his crotch. <laughs> and he was like, okay, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, we're like, that, that's interesting. Oh, it's so funny. That was, that was definitely was one of the funnier moments. Um, and then they, of course, get into 
what's happening with the older couple. Yeah. So as the story unfolds, they are basically trying to make porn, but they're trying to make it more, I don't know, more available on home DVD or home <laughs> VHSs so for people. This is actually a real thing that they're referencing, which was that as soon as things got onto VHS, there was a whole new market for horror films, for slasher films, for porn. Yeah. Because you can just send it straight to someone's house. You didn't have to go through the studio system and then get put onto a VHS. We saw this in, in Boogie Nights, too, Boogie Nights where they the have the thing. giant production company yeah. just email or mailing direct yeah. VHSs of porn. Yeah, Dirk I mean, Diggler. yeah, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, because it got into that, it got into the the change that the industry was going through during that, and then there was also like you know, in Boogie Nights, there's someone who's completely opposed to the idea. He's like, no, film must be classic, and it has to be. Yeah, he's like the artsy fartsy guy. That's the kid in this. Yeah, movie, that's the yeah. kid in this movie. Yeah, definitely. You know, he wants to. He's like, I'm not making porn. I'm not making smut. I'm making art. <laughs> I, lo- I absolutely love the critique of the film student who thinks that they're making art and everything oh, that yeah. they create. And I'm like, this is so funny because I know people like that. I know people like that in film school. It's funny coming from a, a publishing, like it was a publishing or a distribution company yes. for like a two four who has some of the biggest, like, you know, just like the most nerdy film Artsy people. Shit, all are yeah. Gonna, yeah, exactly. They knew what it's they were very, doing. With yeah. That, it's very yeah. funny that, that, that this I also guy love that there. she like references psycho. You love psycho. And he's like, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it wouldn't make sense. Such... He's like, he's like, com- he's like complaining so hard because like, it wouldn't make sense narratively. We'd have to rewrite the whole script. Yeah. He's trying to make excuses. So this, this also ties into how people, so this isn't just the relationships people have with porn and with other partners. This is also a modern talk about relationships that are more common now, which include people being open, people being polyamorous and things like that and how they feel about their interactions with other people. The art kid has this mentality of like, he doesn't want any other men to be around his girlfriend. That's like, that's his argument for it. Whereas the older dude is like, well, it's just business. So like in his mind, that's what makes it better for him. Right. Right. Is that they're not taking it seriously because it's a part of this money making. Yeah. Thing. They even asked him like, how do you feel that your girlfriend's getting rammed? Yeah. And he's just like, as long as the camera's rolling, I could care less. But there is the aspect too, that he's into it. Yeah. He likes seeing his girlfriend have sex with other people. So that's one thing too. Right. And then Kid Cudi's character is just a porn actor. Yeah, <laughs> hey, that's just he what just, he does. That's just yeah, he's there to do it. Yeah, um, how this movie is like basically laid out. They're they're trying to do the distribution. They get a tenant house. Uh, at, they don't. So the thing is, they don't tell the old people what they're doing. That's the thing too. Uh, Wayne gets a tenant house for himself. Yeah, but decides to bring the entire crew so they could film out there, which leaves the old man kind of angry because uh, the people that live on the property is an old woman and an old man that live on there. And immediately gets met with a double-barreled shotgun to the face. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I understood the relationship that was happening with the old people. Was it that the old woman wanted to continue having sex, but he couldn't because he thought he had a heart problem? Yeah, he had a heart problem. And he couldn't. He said, I can't. My heart. Okay. Yeah. I thought so. So like that was kind of your premise was that th- she's wanting to still be sexually active. She's very horny like, <laughs> yeah. to, to put it frank we're just like oh and she's she a- has sundowners <laughs> uh. if you don't do you not know what sundowners is uh, it usually uh. happens with people with dementia like mm-hmm. elderly people with dementia they kind of have like like a psychological break usually when the sun goes down like at oh. night and they kind of go nuts i used to work as a caregiver sundowners is very common oh wow yeah. I, when so you're like, talking about sundowners i thought you're talking about like her floppy no no, no <laughs> not her no we're i didn't ask for your porn of you Mer. <laughs> there's so much porn of you here <laughs> we'll get uh, to that of course uh yeah but i that's a very interesting thing i didn't know that uh that is a thing yeah for for older people that mm-hmm. go through the dementia i mean yeah she, it, it happens pretty quickly too where it it turns to nighttime i think this this movie takes place in one day right yes it's 24 hours yeah it's Mm -hmm. all one day so she finds her way over but then it's like it gets into really creepy territory because she's watching yeah she's like she looks at how beautiful mia goth's character is and which is funny because it's her yeah (laughs) whoa So, so like so in the in the instance of production they had to get two separate shots with the same actor. Yep, that's correct. And then and then they cut them together, yeah. which is really weird to think about. <laughs> they have whole scenes where they interact with each other. Completely. Also, that too. Yeah, oh. I mean, even she even puts her hand on her stomach and stuff. Yeah. How the fuck did they? 
Do so they do they maybe get a double? Probably. I mean, it's not too difficult to replicate yeah. someone's back. You know True. what I mean? Just find um, another find another I, live tan lady. After after her on there. You know, after <laughs> after that happens, you know, she basically wants to reminisce about how she used to be a dancer, how when her husband left the war. Yeah. Who was old as shit because he was in the first world war and the second world war. What? Is that what they said? Yeah. He's like, my husband went in the trenches and he was on the beaches of Normandy. Oh, wow. So he's old as shit. Yeah, that is an old dude. <laughs> um, but um, I do appreciate that the uh, the art school kid was the one that died first. <laughs> yeah. they uh, So they didn't tell these people that they were going to be shooting right. this kind of stuff. And they're making, quote unquote, smut to, you know, these old timers. To be honest, some of the best porn, like. This was not like like your amateur shit. <laughs> we, me and uh, Noah were laughing as we were watching this because he's like, turn around. We're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Doggy style in the 70s, bro? <laughs> not missionary? Sorry, this was not a thing yet. <laughs> I was like, dog, you're revolutionizing this shit. I love that he is the one to propose it. And then he stops him. And he's like, how about you just shut the fuck up and let me do my thing? <laughs> oh, yeah. And then he just moves him to the side with the camera, which is really funny. Yeah, um, so they're sh- they're shooting porn in this tenant house, and then things happen as soon as night falls. Yeah, and that's when things get a little weird. But it all already gets a little weird because they see an old woman in the window, and then they finally see her on the porch. Right. And finally, Mia Goth's character goes up to meet the old woman, and this is like uh, so creepy. <laughs> it is creepy. She also goes inside for some lemonade, which I thought was drugged, but was it? It's just normal lemonade. I mean, it was a good opportunity for something like that to happen, but it turns out she was just being nice. But this is also how the old man discovers that someone's gone inside the house. He sees the cup out, and then he goes and figures out what's going on. There was a pretty wholesome moment when he goes over to the house, and Kid Cudi's character is like, yeah, man, I'll help you find your wife. Dick's just hanging oh, out. Oh, he's he's oh no, and there's like the 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 like the the, uh, the silhouette yes, of his schlong. Which just, appara- <laughs> that must have been like a crazy prosthetic that they were like, let's make the like biggest schlong you've ever seen. <laughs> but like you don't get the full view of it. You just get like the silhouette there, between like hanging there, there, between his legs. A, there's just a tube hanging from yeah, between his yes. legs, man. <laughs> and he's like, he's Yeah, like, yeah I'll yeah. help you. <laughs> and so he goes and helps him, and this was really a moment where they tricked you, where you're like, Oh yeah, the old man's not He's not actually he, as mean. He probably has had to deal with this multiple it, times be, because he he mentions that his wife isn't well. Yeah. Um. And sometimes she goes nuts. You know that's why I bring up that bring up like sundowners. Yeah. Horny sundowner lady. <laughs> um. And uh. So, but they trick you because he traps the one girl, Lorraine. So yeah. He traps Lorraine in the in the basement. So you kind of kind of have this feeling like oh maybe he's trying to protect her from his wife. You know what I mean? Yeah, possibly. But, like possibly, but then they totally flip that later. Dude, yeah. it sucks you can't when trust she, anyone uh, in this movie. She gets like her fingers chopped off with an axe, oh, yeah. which is gnarly when it happens. So, and then well, clothesline by a shot. So I thought it was <laughs> yo for real. <laughs> I thought it was nuts because I wouldn't have trust the guy. I'd be like, oh, my second flashlight is in the basement. Yeah, fuck I'm that. Like, no, you go grab it. Yeah, dog. you go grab it. <laughs> and then she goes down there, and there's a whole ass naked dude like strapped and like laid up, probably for his wife. Yeah, Almost he hundred percent for his yeah, wife. Yeah, he told he says it at some point that he had done that before. Yeah, and the thing is, he's the missing guy on the milk cartons. Also, which is yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> oh, Not God. funny, but it's pretty fucked up. But it's the seventies, so there's milk cartons. I gotta say, <sighs> production wise, this feels like the fucking seventies. It does. They got all the items to look vintage yeah. in the stores. They made everything look very rural and My God, out there. I can only imagine the nightmare. That was the production value to create the store they visited. Right. Because every single item in there had to be period correct. Yeah. And you had to redo an entire gas station for a what, like two minute scene? Yeah. <laughs> Which is nuts. So it's just like that was just so much work that they put into that. I give uh, I give props for that. Yeah, definitely. Literal props. Um, I loved the his interaction too with the cashier. Cause she's, she's, wa- she's watching like this, um, she's watching the preacher, the preacher, but like, okay, was there a connection with the preacher and his daughter? Cause they mentioned there was, well, it was somebody that we knew. So I think if, if, I mean, I don't know who the, I don't know who the preacher is that's on there. I thought it was actually like Mia Goth's character. 
Like is, it is, isn't it her? It is. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. That is his daughter. Yeah. So, so you're watching this preacher the entire movie. Oh, the that's movie. right. That's right. It's her father that's doing the preacher. That's right. That's the reveal at so, the end. And that's they're right. They're like, you know, people feel weird about talking about sex, and then the fucking worker gives them like a weird look, like, ah, oh, you you said the s word. Yeah. <laughs> and then she continues watching this after they leave. They're talking about how. Uh, basically like the new generation of like younger people are ruining America with their sexual deviancy and other right. stuff like that. And eventually the big reveal is that that is the preacher's daughter doing porn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think, I think this film sort of sets uh, a message sort of to say that like this older generation is in some way like covets the youth of the newest generation in oh, a sense yeah. and wants to just kind of be on their level. So it's it's making a grander statement about that as well that this old generation is really just upset at this new generation because they can't fuck anymore. Yeah. They're too old to fuck. Sorry. I, I would guess that because they came up in the 70s era of when porn was popular and then immediately got pushed away and then nobody really talked about it after that whereas now there's a much more positive take on sex work. And you'd be more ideal to be a well, porn star now. But I'm what I'm thinking is like there is still like an old like, like an, an old envy. mentality. Yeah, there's like an envious or an old mentality that still is um, the like the antithesis of that. If that makes sense, like it's still opponent to. Yeah, definitely. They even say, "Let's give a thanks to the horny bastards that keep us employed." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's like their cheers moment yeah. <laughs> where they talk about that. Um, they they also have a moment with the cut with the old couple where like they actually have a sex scene which like i thought like the entire time they were hyping up like oh you know i love you you're still as beautiful as ever i was like this is so fucking wholesome right here and it, like makes you think like dude they could he could probably save us all right he could do it yeah and yeah then, exactly God. they fuck with you like that and then i was just like i watched i like for like a few seconds i'm watching them make out I was like, this is so wholesome. I'm like, oh, this is fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> like, with with fucking... the music and everything and the yeah. lighting and, and everything. And, oh, and like God. the chick is underneath the bed. Trying to get out. Listening to all of this. And then like, yeah, that 70s guy only does missionary too. Oh my God. Just, ah, oh. you're right. <laughs> oh, that's so fucking funny. Um, also, she's like under the bed. Yeah, when this happened, so like the the thing is like pushing down on her, and she that was nerve wracking her trying to get out of there. I am glad that she is just immediately leaves. She's like, I'm done, out. Let me leave this place. Yeah, and then also fuck that girl who's like, I hate all of you. Like you guys brought me here. Like she immediately regrets her decision to like go out. The oh. the one who's really quiet. And then she like Church mouse. Yeah, and then she literally <laughs> runs out and then just gets pa just fucking blast it like in the beginning. <laughs> like right at the front of the house. And you're like, like, oh my god. You could have survived if you stuck together and just shut your mouth. Uh, I, I have to admit that this is my favorite scene of the movie. Yeah. Because because <laughs> Because clothesline with a shotgun, the lady has the pistol from the car, the the gun has gone off, you know, a church mouse is dead. But when they're bringing her inside to hold her and they're like, all right, well, we got to plan this out real carefully, dear, and everything, moving her body inside. And then she like gurgles and chokes and it freaks out the old man. He has a heart attack and dies. Yeah. Amazing. And then, <laughs> and then you have the showdown. You have the showdown with Mia Goth's character and she tries to shoot her, shoot the old lady. The gun doesn't go off. The old lady takes a shot. She ducks the shot. The lady is hit by the kickback from the shotgun and goes out. My immediate thought is, her hips fucked. That was and my she, immediate and thought. And it. then she literally says that I died. I was like, <laughs> fuck you. I'm so happy. I don't give a shit. Fuck both of these old fucks. A very satisfying ending because not only does she get one over on the old lady, she gets in the truck, backs up yeah. over her head and then pulls forward and out. And then on her final trip out, pulls out some blow, does some of it, and then just keeps driving. <laughs> I gotta say, like, yeah. the shot of her driving with the, the cross... Yeah. Like that was Dangling. a fucking really good shot yeah. mm -hmm. in the really car. Good. My other favorite shot in this movie is when she uh, goes in the lake and they have the drone shot of the alligator coming slowly towards oh, them. Oh, so good. So Dude, good. I was so stoked for that. Yeah, because <laughs> it's right there. Also, I don't know if it's just me. I wouldn't get in the water. Oh, me either. But the thing is, it made me, made me look up. Are there alligators in Texas? Turns out 215 counties have alligators in Texas. Yeah. 
because they're still technically the South. Yeah. No, which is wild. Like, <laughs> what? Okay. Yeah. Um, um, they also knew of the old couple knows about the Gator. Yeah, they do. And, I, and I can only assume that they've been like dumping bodies. Oh, oh yeah. They, they even re- make reference to it. Yeah. We'll dump them in the lake for the Gators like the rest of them. Yeah. They've done this multiple times. Yeah, yeah. This has to. Uh, so when they get, when the police gets there. They're like, what the fuck? Like, there's oh, so yeah. much going on. What do you on. reckon happened? I don't fucking know. I love his <laughs> so answer. Good. Just like, I don't fucking know. Like, why would you ask me that? Like, how am I supposed to know? I, I, I do like this because they open up with the cops showing up at the, like, the right. aftermath of all of this. And then they go into the story. And then it ends with that, too. So it's a good a good closing. Um, well. I got to say, like, the the entire, like, build up to this area is, like, a lot of fun. The characters are fine. The yeah. characters do their their tropes really well, but like when bodies start going and the kill count goes up, it gets really creative. The thing yeah. is, like I, I've never seen someone just get gored through <laughs> through a barn door with fucking a pitchfork. I have seen someone get their eye taken out or even like a gunshot through yeah. a door, but the pitch <laughs> pitchfork. Also, what kind of aim does this woman have to just get precisely through those holes? Right into the eyes. Yeah, and I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> um, how does... Oh, God. We can't even... We have to talk about RJ's scene when yeah. he dies. Because after he gets cucked, it has to film his girlfriend fucking Kid Cudi. Now, when I say it that way, it sounds funnier. So, right? <laughs> it sounds way funnier. And this is actually a scene they don't show you. Yeah. They don't. They, like, they make reference to it. Yeah, they it, make reference it. to it. And I wonder if... He's so upset. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I think it was just to make him be like, he's super he's, upset. Like we were watching him shower and like he was had this sort of face on him. So funny. And I was just like, dude, this is an incel face. I know. Like, yeah. He's about to go crazy right now. Yeah. I knew this wasn't supposed to be a funny moment or maybe it was, but I was, I was just like, this is so funny. Like this dude is broken and she's <laughs> happily sleeping like, <laughs> in the bed after that. Like, yeah. Kid Cudi got me, you know? Yeah. And so he decides to say, fuck it, grabs the keys and leaves. And then he finds the sundowner. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the then, old woman, man, she. Uh, this is great too because as she's stabbing him, the blood gets on the headlights. Yeah. So then it's just all red. It's on so them. sweet. I was like, this is a dope. scene. The music is great, and this is like, this is my favorite scene in the movie. Is she has like an Elizabeth Bathory moment? Yeah. Where much. she gets the blood on her and she begins to dance like she used to back in the day. Yeah. And you can see that her wrinkles are going away in real time. They are uh, alluding to the idea that she might have to kill people to keep some of her youth, which is an interesting. I I thought it. I thought that too, but she be, she's still old after yeah. that. So I was just like, dude, are they going to go this weird angle where she has to sacrifice people so she could stay young? It would have been dope forever. as fuck if they committed fully to it, and right. then you see you see a younger pearl yeah it's her it's literally just me I'm <laughs> yeah it's just me a yeah. god <laughs> yeah, I, I did i did really like they have like there's some like like blurring effect or something they do on her when she's dancing that she does look younger and i, I was i was like okay this is this is all right this is becoming a little more fantastical now yeah and then they kind of don't go back to that no. again really after yeah. she kills more people maybe and maybe it's like the thrill of killing gives her youthful energy or something because then she gets real spry about doing <laughs> stuff after yeah, that she, she's really ready yeah I think the creepiest moment is um, Mia Goth's character waking up to this girl, like, yeah. fully naked, cuddling her and, like, touching her hair mm. and boobs and shit. She goes and, like, immediately showers after that, too. Oh. It's just like, ugh. Like, I can't imagine what that's like. Yeah. To yeah. wake up just like, oh, my awful. God. She, like, screams so loud, too. It's great. I, I, I have heard quite a few stories of caregivers taking care of couples where the uh the either the either the either of them gets a little bit handsy or starts to getting a little bit like oh yeah i i like i remember i remember uh, dorian taking care of a client and like you know playfully dancing with her but then she would be a little bit Oh, like, no. you know what I mean? Like sort of thing. And you know, cause it was like, he's like, Oh yeah, we'll dance. He's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, this is, this is nice. And then she'd like go in for a smooch and he's like, Whoa, no, I thought we were just dancing, you know, platonic dancing. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, that just alludes to like the, how some old people are. They'll, yeah. They, they want to relive their glory days. Yeah, absolutely. And for someone like that, who had to deal with, their husband going to war not once but two times being lonely and never having to be able to like 
fulfill their their dream of being a dancer. They even they even allude to this with uh with uh Mia's character where she's like you're just an old hag that kills people and you're never you're not beautiful. Like I'm going to be a fucking star. Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, jerk. Like <laughs> <laughs> I gotta so say, funny. Boogie Nights meets Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the it's perfect good description. Perfect yeah. description for this, yeah. honestly. You guys have any yeah. favorite scenes? Oh man, uh, the <laughs> the scene when Kid Cudi's character comes out is just <laughs> they knew what they were doing, and it's so fucking funny because that's like that's like the trope, right? Is that in the seventies they hired black actors because they're huge schlong, so they were like, let's let's do this joke. Yeah, it's a visual gag too. Like you, it's a visual gag, but it also alludes to like even the script that they're making. Right, just like my daddy's not home. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait. So we completely skipped over this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My bad. Let's back up. <laughs> yeah. Back up. <laughs> oh my god. So they did. They did the farmer's daughter. Daughters. Daughters. <laughs> yeah. One's older. One's younger. And the uh, black actor showed up. And been like, and he's supposed to be like, oh, like he wasn't trying to have sex with my, them. My car broke down. My car broke down. I just need to get back to town. <laughs> and they both seduce him. One, one inside the house, and the other like in the barn with like where the horses are, which is also a hilarious joke because she's she's oh my God. she's out there in the stables like, but with the cows and the horses, and this dude shows up anyway. <laughs> you get the joke. Yeah. So like they end up. That's what they do, and this is also a scene where the old woman is watching, like from the window, Ooh, yeah. which is watching yourself. So it, that's the first moment where I was like, "It's the same person," because she had the same makeup. She had the blue, yeah, like, eyeshadow, which is like also they made her really look real old, man. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. The prosthetics that they must have used for that. That uh, that that plot is hilarious to me, but like also I felt a weird uh, racist vibe from the old guy when he was like, Hey man, Semper Fi, right? Always a Marine. What's a Marine? Always a Marine. I'm like, this guy's going to die with just his dick out. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was saying. I was like, that fucking sucks, dude. If that happens. Um, but yeah, they, I mean, he was kind of, the old man was like your ugly old bastard character. Like he was, he was ugly as shit. Like <laughs> they really uh, put up the prosthetics on his face. But yeah, I'd say that was, that was a funny, it was like your early days of when they were creating porn categories. <laughs> and that was one of them for the people who are just like, ah, yeah, you get to fuck some dude's daughters while they're gone. Oh, uh, and interracial too. Yeah. That's you. This was the, the time period, you know, it's kind of wild because I think that like an official, like mainstream television, your first interracial kiss is like Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Oh, which is like what it happened they, that late they've been doing that shit in porn forever <laughs> <laughs> porn the most progressive medium uh- <laughs> <laughs> i love i love people who do really serious dissertation papers about the like usefulness of porn in technology and popular media culture and how like the internet wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for porn it's true because for every like normal website there's like 10 porn sites and that's what's keeping the internet alive. Still keeping the internet <laughs> yeah, alive. So like, I mean, now it's sort of like a marketing thing. But like when it was first a thing, um, people were like, yo, I can put porn on the internet. You wait 12 minutes for a single image. <laughs> you know, two hours well, for this one was, image. This was also when famous people were doing sex tapes. So you had like, oh, yeah. you had like, uh, what is her name? Pam Anderson and um, what the fuck is his name? Tommy Lee? Yeah, that that wasn't intended to go out there, though. No, it wasn't. But then at some point, somebody was making money off of it. Oh, yeah. And, and it was like... Someone broke into their house, yeah. stole their personal home sex tapes, Sucks. and sold them on VHS. Just ruined their and lives. And that was the time where everyone was, quote, unquote, prudish. Yeah. Yeah. So... But, I mean, were they really that surprised from these two people? No. Like, come on. That's fucking the guy from Motley Crue and the guy from fucking... Or the girl from Baywatch, bro. <laughs> you yeah, know, no that was fucked up. I was like, are you really going to give them that much shit? Like, this is stupid. You're going to ruin her career because she fucked? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You made a whole series about her running and her tits bouncing up and down. You guys are terrible people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Stop being a pussy. Anyway. <laughs> and what are you, a prude? Uh, yeah. yeah th- I, lo- I love that she's like... Oh, you're a prude in this movie, and it's like it's it's smut. Like fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that everybody was like, "You're not the person who should be here." <laughs> uh, did you have a favorite scene? Yeah, Rich? 
favorite scene. Oh, I already said it, but it's that whole interaction that takes place after the shotgun clothesline yeah, on Church Mouse. Just like your final scene. Just that final scene, because it's just all, everything happens at once. Like, we get full circle. We get the heart attack coming back to kill the old man. We all knew that was going to happen at it some point. It also didn't feel like a cop-out. Like, no, 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 like the no. ending made sense. Everything, everything happened for a reason, and the consequences of actions yeah. were taken. You know, if you're 90 years old and are brittle as hell, you shouldn't be firing shotguns because they'll just, you know. I'm surprised the old sh- man could do it, <laughs> right? <laughs> without being knocked over. He's it's a the military vet. background. That's true. Military yeah. background, yeah. probably okay. Dude, she, that on the other flying. hand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like you remember Django Unchained. Oh yeah, when, yeah. when people get shot and they say go bye. <laughs> That's literally what it made me think of because she goes flying and they must have put her on a while (laughs) of great comedy moment insert it. Holy shit. Uh, I think I told, I said my favorite scene. It's when uh, the alligator comes through, but like that shot is wonderful. Yeah. I I think it had to be a CGI alligator for sure. Either that or somebody's in the water with a little puppet. Oh, they're just, they're just have an alligator seat on just floating. (laughs) But, But also, I'm glad that this is a fucking alligator movie because I got to see that blonde chick get fucked up. I was like, yes, yeah. Gator. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the line that she says after that is, goes, was that the one? You know I hate blondes. Yeah, yeah. holy yeah. shit. Like, yep. Got a personal vendetta that you do not explore. Yeah. So this, this movie's pretty dope. I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, I would rate it pretty highly, I think. Yeah. I'm going to go with a nine. Nine or eight. 8.5 maybe. You know, you know, an 8.5 for me also. I would watch this movie yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. This absolutely. would be fun to watch with people cuz yeah. it's just you have hilarious reactions. It, it's it's probably one of the one of the first A24 movies I've seen that I think I could actually sit down and watch it like a second time maybe and then like with other people too and I think they might actually get a kick out of it. It doesn't spend too much time too. It's only an hour and 45. Yeah. yeah. So like it gets to the point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you if you have issues with watching really long drawn out shots like a lot of A two four movies tend to do, they this are is, a fan of the long take. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are a fan of well, the long. There's take. some long takes in here. Yeah, they're not, but they're not so like. I mean, yeah. there's not as many of them. I feel yeah. like it's going to be more open to other people. I get what you're saying. <laughs> so for this movie, then I'll probably give it an eight point five as well. Oh, uh, eight point five is all around. Yeah, I think nice. so. Just because, um, it does more than your average sexploitation movie does while also creating this new kind of world because there it's going to be cool to see the prequel yeah for it to see how this old couple came to be in that house and like how they're, they're probably going to make that one like a slasher film it's going to come out this year so we could Which probably talk about it not too long from now yeah yeah so yeah definitely i recommend it go watch it it, it, it defies the typical tropes yeah it turns those on its head it messes with you it's it's good at that i feel like on a guessing. this will be a not a cornerstone, but it will be a point for like the modern horror. Yeah, it's films. a pretty important because it's movie um, that came out because it's it's a porn exploitation movie, and yeah. we don't see those ever. Not really anymore. So, yeah. So while you have you know your newer kind of eras, this will be a dot in the bucket for sure, or a coin in the bucket, whatever the term is. I don't know what it's called. But... <laughs> drop? Do you mean a drop? Yeah, sure. Because that's that. Yeah, it's a drop in the bucket. <laughs> a drop in the bucket on the horror waypoint map. Yeah, uh, all right. For cool. like modern stuff. Yeah, I get you. All right. So check it out. Also check out our episode on Boogie Nights that we referenced here. Yeah. A lot of fun. That is also us diving into the 70s porn We also industry. talked about a lot of A24 films. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're talking like Midsommar, The Midsommar, Lighthouse. Hereditary. Uh, Hereditary. Uh, Hereditary. Uh, the Witch. <laughs> Green Knight. Or Green lamb. Knight, Lamb. <laughs> lamb. <laughs> Shit. Oh, wasn't the Neon Demon E242? Uh, no, that was um, that was a different one. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> check get... out that one too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you'd like to support us, please check out our social medias. We have the Facebooks, the Instagrams, and the Twitters. Uh, but Mitch, if they want to support us financially, how can they do that? Oh, you know what you can do? You can go on our Patreon, where for $2 a month, you can recommend a uh, piece of horror media for us to review, and we'll uh, c- cover it. Anything else? Oh, you know, Mer, how are your threads these days? They're pretty good. They're pretty good. Uh, would you like some new threads, though? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, you can totally get some new threads uh, on our Teespring. You can get hats. 
glasses. Glasses? T-shirts. I mean, like, drinking glasses. Oh. Like, a pint-sized glass. Okay? Oh, gotcha, not, gotcha, gotcha. Not, not like these cool shades I'm wearing right now. Mugs. Mugs as well. We do have mugs, too, huh? Yeah, that yeah. is a thing. Also, make sure to check out our pages on Spotify and Apple Music. Give us a review. As well as rate us on Spotify. Every little bit helps. Mm-hmm. Make sure to also check out the Discord and the Twitch, where we stream games as well as hang out with all our friends and fans and discuss horror and other things memes food pets yeah some theory very (laughs) little theory but some theory here and there (laughs) uh but yeah we have all kinds of stuff coming the schedule is loaded up and we're ready to go and yeah check out our other episode where we talk about basket case that was recommended for our patreon uh supporter ray Thank you to all our patrons for coming through, and make sure to give us your recommendation when you're ready. All right, you ready to go? Yep. Here you go. Oh, oh, you, oh, you know, you know who we're missing someone. Oh, just, just that we're. Oh, yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, just that work. Yeah, we miss her. She'll be back next episode. Next episode. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I'm Mitch. I'm Mer, and I'm Jonathan. Thank you. Woo.